Right, so we are going to start the lesson number four. And this is also an important lesson, uh, part of the polymer processing uh, lectures. Right, uh, we already discussed extrusion in detail and uh, the blown film, uh, kill roll film casting, and cable coating. Uh, these are kind of very brief way. Right, today we are going to look at again a couple of processes uh, compression molding. Injection molding, I'm going to go into a bit of depth into the injection molding, okay, and very briefly, few other processes at the end of the lecture. The main thing I'm going to look at in the polymer processing uh, lectures uh, are the two processes, uh, that is extrusion and injection molding, okay. The other processes are, uh, it's a very brief uh, description only, right. So, uh, to start with the compression molding process, so this is a very simple process, why we need to have this type of process is, so there is no any kind of uh, special type of dies you need. So we don't need to have any closed two channels. So we, what we do here, so we have a mold, two sided mold. This is a fixed mold on the fixed side and this is the moving side. So the mold cavity is the uh, shape of the product that you need. For example, if you want to produce some kind of a tray, you have to have a mold this with this shape. Right, and then based on the thickness, and the dimensions, we can work out the volume of the material required. Okay, so uh, the volume of the material required. So then, therefore, what we call in the middle here, we call it the charge. It's a kind of pre-prepared -pre material. So the charge is the material that we're going to mold into the shape. So based on the volume of the product, we can pre-calculate the required size, the weight or the volume of the material required. Yeah. So that is what we call the charge. This is pre-measured to the product size. Okay, it could be the weight that you're going to decide, or it could be the volume, mostly the weight. So you can easily cut uh, and then weigh it and then get into the mold because you know that is the amount of material needed for the product. Okay, and then uh, we preheat the mold actually, so into the temperatures that you require, maybe 120 to 100, depending on the material. So this is mostly for thermosetting materials, okay, thermosetting materials. Uh, then uh, once the mold is heated, we place the charge or the preform into the mold and then uh, the, this top plate will move, right? We apply a compressive force. So what will happen then? So material will just uh, the, uh, move around or the flow around the die and then try to get into the shape. So but we have to make sure that the mold is completely uh, full. So therefore, we add a bit of extra material. Okay, so these materials can be just seen from these edges we call flash. The flash is a sign to show that mold is completely full with material. Okay, so then if, it's, if we need 25 grams of material and then we add maybe 11 grams. So the extra bit to make sure that we have some kind of flash to make sure that there will not be any voids in the mold. The flash is important to make sure that the mold is completely full. Right. The compression force now here. So we just lower the mold manually maybe or it could be automated. So but so what will happen now inside the mold you can assume for oh, these are hot polymers so some molten uh, the, the gases like or the fumes could be there. So then what we can do then we can just release the mold few times so we apply the pressure a few times, okay, and then we can release the uh, volatile gases inside the mold. Okay, this could be done manually or it, in automated processes. There are some kind of valves you can release the gases inside the mold. Uh, otherwise, it will create uh, problems with the product. Okay, uh, thermosetting nature. We know the thermosetting material. The cure in process is mostly by heating. Thermoplastic during cooling. For the thermal setting, we want to activate cross-linking. Yeah. So therefore, we have to determine the size uh, or the time uh, uh, that we have to apply the cooling or the curing process. We apply the pressure, and then maybe just apply it on and off for a few minutes, and then after that, we have to leave it for a while. Could be two minutes, five minutes. So that is the curing time. So we allow the cross-linking to happen in the material, and then. That is what we need. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, after that, we release the pressure and then let it cool uh, by natural air, or maybe you can apply some uh, the the cooling mode uh, fans or kind of things. 
Okay? So here again, for most of the processors, as I mentioned, the main part is the mold. Okay, mold design is the most important part in polymer processing and also expensive bit. So here also we have three type of mold, the cash mold, positive mold and semi-positive mold. I'm not going to discuss this into detail. The main difference between these molds are the way of controlling the thickness. Okay, the main difference is the way how they control the thickness of the product. So you can assume that though in this process is really simple process and very old process and we can't guarantee the exact thickness. So therefore the dimensions might not be as good as we expect like injection molding. Uh, okay? uh, the sum of the, pro the material that we use, the polyesters, uh, the poly uh, formaldehyde, oxide, so there are several materials, mostly we just use thermosetting materials. Okay? The pressure could be 30 bar, 40 bar, so you have to decide depending on the size of the, uh, the, the mold and the material type the parameters. Temperature is also important uh, not to degrade the polymers. Degradation means it will just thermally degrade or uh, like chemically degrade. So degradation as I mentioned before, the easy way to understand is just uh, the, some discoloration of the product, the visual observation. But you will observe this degradation of material through mechanical properties. Okay. So therefore uh, the setting, process settings are really important here. Uh, the processing steps uh, pre, a mold heated to the desired temperature, the pre-prepared uh, uh, discharge placed inside the mold, okay, and then hydraulic press, we just apply the pressure or the force, so, okay, pressure and heat at the same time, because mold is heated, and uh, pressure and more, uh, the heat at the same time, and then we just try to uh, apply the pressure on and off for a while to remove volatile gases, and then uh, curing under the pressure and heat, okay? Curing under the pressure uh, the, inside the mold and then product is removed. So primary factors you have to decide as the materials engineer is the volume of the material or the amount of material required depending on the product dimensions, heating time and technique. So mostly we use resistive heaters to heat up the dye and heating time is really important as well. And the force to be applied to the mold, the force to be applied, it decides the thickness of the product. You can assume if you apply very large force, the flash will be really big, so then you will have very uh, minimum thickness, you can't control it. So then it is something, first of all, you, you do some trial and error steps, and you realize this is the force we require for this product. Yeah, so of course, very <coughs> underdeveloped process. Yeah, then cooling time and technique is also important, that is for the curing time. Heating time for the mold, cooling time, they are important, and then uh, the heating technique, the amount of material, and uh, the force applied, temperature and pressure to be applied. So these things are the important things in this process. Okay, uh, some products, Wellington boost, machinery parts, some kind of simple trays, like you know, the serving trays. So put some in place, these kind of things, they are easy to manufacture from this process. Why we choose this process is the, the, the material flow is completely by the pressure applied to the mold. So therefore we can't have very complicated molds. So material will not go into that because this is not molten, it is a kind of uh, the partially solid or highly viscous uh, charge we just use for this process. So therefore it will not flow easily like injection mold in no extrusion. Okay, so therefore we can't use complicated designs here. Only simple designs we can uh, have from this process. Right, uh, the, one of the good examples is uh, uh, tires, but the tire compression molding process is uh, well controlled. Because they have uh, different layers and then the stitches and also some metal wires and it is, that is example of compression molding, but uh, this is well controlled with technology. But the one I was talking about before is a very basic uh, the technique. You will find some machines in James Lightly building. So you might use these machines uh, in your project to prepare the samples. For example, if you want to prepare the specimens for tensile testing, uh, uh, rheology tests, so you will use compression molding to prepare these samples. Okay? And uh, advantages, if you have a simple process, okay, high skill rate is not required, low initial capital, 
uh, the no gates is proof that means in the injection mold you, you have some gates runners to flow the material through you have to decide all of these in the injection molding process or there are some other processes to design the die okay uh, and uh, some disadvantages uh, relatively high waste high waste mean the charge or well, the, the, you got the the, uh, the flash once you place the charge so it is a it's a kind of waste uh, the the flash material and also you can't make sure about the dimensions as i said thickness could be slightly varied okay it is not controlled well controlled there are no sensors in the process to control the thickness or so so it depends on the force applied you have to manually control it or you have to decide the force applied and uh, the manpower required and it's a slow process depending on how long you're going to cool it and heat it okay we can't manufacture complex parts due to the reason that I mentioned before. So because material will not flow into the end of the mold. So we can only go for simple shapes like simple trays or easy flow uh, global molds. Uh, that is what we can use with this process. Yeah, normally after the production process, let's say we manufacture like a uh, uh, tray, there should be someone to take off the flash material and clean it up. The edges and you have to make sure that everything is all right. You normally clean it up the edges and cut them off or something like that. So a bit of uh, labor intensive process. So simply the post processing steps, materials and then advantages and disadvantages of the process. Uh, this short video provides a kind of nice demonstration on how the compression molding process works. Compression molding was one of the first processes used by the plastics industry, and it is still commonly utilized to make articles from thermoset materials. A pre-mixed thermoset material is being cut off and weighed to provide the exact charge needed to produce the part. The charge is placed directly into the mold, which has been heated to temperatures between 300 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. As the mold halves are forced together by the press, the plastic flows into the recesses of the cavity. Since the plastic material is thermosetting, the heat and pressure cause an irreversible chemical change in the plastic which solidifies the part. The plastic won't soften so the mold needn't be cooled. This particular mold is for microwave oven trays. After a short interval, the press is opened and the molded part removed. The cycle is complete. Any plastic remaining in the mold is removed with compressed air and the cavity is ready for the next charge. While the press is molding the next part, the operator breaks off the thin layer of overflow called flash. Another example of compression molding. In this case, preforms are preheated in a dielectric heater. This mold is forming eight knobs simultaneously in identical cavities. That is all I want to discuss for the compression molding actually. So for this process, I would like you to know about uh, the main processing steps, okay, and uh, the main products that have been manufactured using this process, uh, the, the key process parameters that we have to control, and also the, the main materials that we can use, and the other related parameters that I discussed during this video. Okay, hope it is clear.